In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a website from with Cordo and our studio. It um, is based on a template. You can find the link to the template below the video. The finished website is going to look like this. It's hosted on GitHub pages. It'll have a home page and a projects page, and you can add content as you see fit. And as you get used to using the system and you, get, you understand how it works, you can start adding additional tabs or other content. But the idea here is just to get you up and running with the most minimal website. And then you can turn to uh, the Cordo documents and start making it fancy and doing whatever else you want. I'll just say a quick word about Cordo. It's a new publishing system that's designed to work not just with R, but with Python and other languages, Julia work in Observable. It allows you to um, publish to all different formats. It's kind of an um, expansion of the framework that was available only in R previously, R Markdown, Bookdown, Blogdown, that kind of a system. And it's um, more flexible, more streamlined. Um, definitely the wave of the future. So we're not getting into this other than what I've just said. Um, the idea again is just to get you up and running with one very particular use case of Cordo. So we're gonna go to github.com slash JTR13 slash website dash template and start following all of the instructions here. And I'll give you some tips along the way. So the first thing is that I'm assuming that you know how to use RStudio, that you know how to push and pull from GitHub to RStudio and back using the Git panel in RStudio. So if you're not familiar with that, then um, this is going to be a challenge. The other piece of that is that you need to have a working GitHub personal access token. And if you haven't used um, this system for a while, this might be new to you. If you don't have it, you should set one up. You can follow these instructions in the online Happy Git and GitHub for the use R um, to know how to do that, that. Most of the problems I've seen with Git and GitHub from our studio have to do with not having a working personal access token. Um, I also encourage you to upload to, I'm sorry, download the latest version of our studio. You're going to need Cordo, which is a separate piece of software, but it comes with recent versions of RStudio. So the best thing to do is just to click on help from within RStudio and check for updates and make sure you're up to date there. I want to hear from you. I want to know whether this is working from, for you or if it's not and what kind of feedback you have. So please um, click on the discussions link, which I see is not there, but it'll be there soon and um, you can uh, communicate with me in that way. So we are ready to do the first step. The first step is to click on the use this template button. If you don't see it, that means you're probably not logged into GitHub. So make sure you're logged in and then click on use this template. You're gonna click create a new repository. From here, you give it a name. I'll just call it my website. And make sure you leave it on public or else GitHub pages are not going to work. And this one already exists, so let's call it my website too. And I'll create the repository from the template. And so notice I did not fork that repository. I clicked on the use that template instead. So now I'm on a new repo and it is gen you'll see generated from JTR 13 website template, but this should have your username on GitHub and whatever you called your repository and you can give it any name. It's different from forking in that way. You can give it any name you want. So we're now up to setting up pages and this is to tell GitHub that we want it to um, take all of the files in the docs folder and create a website. So to do that, we're gonna click on the settings button and then pages. The source should say deploy from a branch. For the branch, you're gonna click main and then you click docs and click save. Okay. It's gonna take it a few minutes to 
host the website. You can actually follow it by going to actions and you can watch in the pages build development tab what's happening, but that's a little boring. So we'll come back to that later. And what we're gonna do is copy the repo link. So this is in order to clone it and be able to work locally. So we click on code and make sure that this, that the HTTPS tab is underlined and then click to copy the link. And we go to our studio, click file, new project, version control, get, paste that link. It might automatically populate this with the name, but if it doesn't, you can type that in and then choose the project as a subdirectory of, you can choose where you want it to be. I like it to be high level so it doesn't interact with any other uh, Dropbox or any other kind of version control system I have. And then click create project. Now what you can do is open the readme. And the readme will give you all of the instructions that we've been following. And what's nice about this is that we can delete all of the things that we've done so far. And I'm gonna put in the name in the readme of the current repo. Um, the one thing that we skipped was to click on the little gear button and um, add the website link on GitHub. So let's save this and let's go back to GitHub and do that now. And you should see a little box that says use your GitHub pages website. You just click that box and then save changes. And what that does is it gives you the link to the website. You have to keep in mind that there's two different links you're gonna be paying attention to. One link is the link to your repo on GitHub and the other link is the link of the rendered website. So we haven't made any changes to it. This is just the template. This is the default. You can see that it just says my website, your name, um, projects. There's no personal information here, okay? So now we're gonna go back to our studio. We've done this, we can skip this and we've done this and we've cloned it. So now we're up to the step of editing the cordo.yaml file. So we're gonna open up that file and just change anything that's in all caps. So let's call this my website. We're gonna change this to in this case, my username and repo. And then I'll put my name here. And that's it, we save that. And yeah, there's a note here. The indentation in this YAML file, any YAML file is really, really important. If you make us even add a single extra space, um, to the indent that shouldn't be there, you're going to have problems. So please be very, very careful with the indentation. This is done. And now we're gonna render the website and um, you actually don't need to install Cordo if since you have the latest version of RStudio, I'm gonna update that. I thought I did, but I guess not. Um, so we're going to skip that. And then we just go to the build tab here and click render website. And what that does is update all of the files in the docs folder, all of the HTML files. And we can um, view the website locally by either using browse URL docs slash index.html or just opening this file directly. So I'll just open it here. And you can see that the changes that we made are now showing up. My awesome website, it has um, my name there and um, 
if I click on GitHub, it'll take me to the 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 repo that has the um, source files. So we're done with all of these. It looks good. So we're gonna commit and push all of the changed files to GitHub. And I do that by clicking one of the files, then Command A to select everything and then click all of the rest and then commit. Give it a message, close, push. And we're done with that. And if we go back to the website, you can see it's not updated yet. It'll take, it might take it a few minutes to do so. If you really have trouble and it's not updating, you can clear the browser history. Sometimes that happens and it just, you just can't see the new version without doing that. Um, but we can always go to actions and see. Now it looks like it's done. So we might be in that situation, but let's try to refresh again. And there, this time refreshing works. So that's it. We have an up and running website. I'll just show you a few more things um, that will be useful for working on your website. Every time that you make changes, you need to render the website locally, check that everything looks good, and then push all the files to GitHub. You can't just make a change to a file and then expect that it's gonna change on GitHub, even if you um, commit and push the QMD file that has the content. So remember to do that. Now, the first things you're gonna wanna do are add some content to, um, the index file, I, you can, of course, change these tabs. You can change the picture. So in the image folder, there's a profile picture. You can put that in, whatever you want to do here. I'm assuming you know how to use R Markdown, and it's really, the, the Cordo format is really the same, in term, mostly the same in terms of headings and things like that. Um, the other thing you might want to do is change the theme. So you can check out the themes on bootswatch.com and change the name there. Um, and really, you're ready at this point to check out all of the information on the Cordo documentation page for all of the different options for websites. So we can um, go there quickly and take a look. I can go to guide websites and um, you'll see at the end that you have all different kinds of options. So we have a section like this for the nav bar on the left side. And this is where you list the different QMD files that you have and you can add additional ones and then they'll start showing up as tabs at the top of the website. And there's many, many other things that you can do. Um, the, the last thing I wanna mention is that you can, to not forget, not to forget to um, delete everything here. I think I accidentally deleted the heading. And you can you can leave a line um, if you'd like that indicates that you that you generated this project from this website template. And that's all. I hope this was helpful to you.